Moving on, this was out of the drudge, uh, posted on the mercurynews.com. Most workers hate their job or have checked out, Gallup poll says. The survey classifies three types of employees among the 100 million people in America who hold full-time jobs. The first is actively engaged, which represents 30 million Americans. I'm included in that group. I feel like I'm actively engaged here. The second type of worker is not engaged, which accounts for 50 million. That's sort of your bell curve, your average people who just kind of show up and go through the motions. Um, and the third type, they're actively disengaged. They hate going to work. These workers are about 20 million, undermine their companies with their attitude, according to the report. Gallup estimates that workers who are actively disengaged cost the U.S. as much as $550 billion in economic activity yearly. The level of employee engagement over the past decade has largely been stagnant, according to the researchers. And that article, just reading that, prompted me to say, well, why, why do we have these 20 million people that are actively disengaged, coupled with another 50 million people that are just kind of showing up and going through the motions? Why do we have that? Well, yesterday we reported on a story out of the CPA Practical Advisor, ex-McDonald's worker sues franchise that required fee-based payroll credit debit cards. And we posted this on Infowars.com. Uh, the lady found the suit, Natalie Gunn Shannon, who was an employee at McDonald's, was given, uh, they wanted to give her cards, pay her on these, these uh, debit cards. Um, the suit seeks an unspecified amount of monetary damages on behalf of employees and asks the judge to award punitive damages against the company for its ill-gotten gains contrary to justice, equity, good conscience, and Pennsylvania law. So the way it works is like this. They give you a card, which conveniently is all the money is deposited into a J.P. Morgan Chase account. Then in order to look at your card, in order to pull money out, in order to transfer money, they all have these fees. And I'm going to go over the fees right now. This is what it is. The J.P. Morgan Chase payroll card carries fees for nearly every type of transaction. According to the lawsuit, including a $1.50 charge for ATM withdrawals, $5 for over-the-counter cash withdrawals, $1 to check the balance, $0.75 cents per online bill payments, and $10 a month if the card is left inactive for more than three months. For just by doing nothing, they're going to charge you $10. That's going right into Jamie Dimon's pocket at J.P. Morgan Chase. And this is not just going with McDonald's. And I have a McDonald's story after this last part here. Walmart is also doing this. The largest private employer in the U.S. switched to paperless pay in 2009 with about half of its 1.4 million employees receiving direct deposit and half receiving paycheck cards. The Home Depot, Lowe's, UPS, FedEx, and hundreds of other large companies use payroll cards. The Chicago Public School System uses them to pay more than 4,000 student employees. What is this doing? Well, it's giving the banks access to your money because they're going to be able to take out all this money and fees. It's also training people to be part of the cashless society control grid, which wants to do away with cash so all transactions can be monitored. So maybe the NSA could sneak, take a sneak peek at their, you know, they, if they want, they could do that. Um, here's my little McDonald's story. Back in 91, 1991, seems so long ago now, I was an employee at McDonald's. Uh, I started, when I started, minimum wage was $4.25 an hour. Uh, I started off working uh, as a cook. I moved up to cashier. About three months into my uh, employment there, oh yeah, there it is, ugh, visions of the McNugget tray <laughs> go through my mind right there, eating the silicone. Um, they, they took me in for an evaluation. They said, we're going to evaluate you. And you've been doing great. You've progressed. You know how to use the cash register system. We can put you in any position here. But you haven't worked here long enough for a real raise. So this is what we're going to do. This has actually happened. They gave me a one penny raise. One penny per hour. I went from $4.25 an hour to $4.26 an hour working for McDonald's. How do you think that made me feel? Kind of made me feel actively disengaged. Yeah, I didn't feel like that guy. I didn't feel like a crack clown. I felt like a piece of dog meat. I'm like, here I am busting my butt, helping this company make money, taking people's orders, not messing them up, doing a good job, reliable, showing up on time, staying late if needed, and I get one penny per hour raise, 426. And that wage of 426 stayed on my paycheck till I stopped working there making $4.26 an hour. 
from there, I moved to be in a closer because I'm like, you know what? If I'm not going to get paid for kicking butt and doing a good job, I'll just go be in a closer where I don't have to work as hard. Therefore, I became one of the actively disengaged. Now, we're continuing with this meme of the, <laughs> the fiscal cliff. That's a very interesting graphic there done by Marcos Morales. Out of Forbes, here's another reason why people are not are actively disengaged. Half of college grads are working in jobs that don't even require a degree. So after getting all that those loans, paying all those fees, now they can't have a job that helps them pay back that loan, which I'll get to in a second. Nearly half of college grads from a four-year college are working in jobs that don't require a four-year degree. Grads from public universities are 11% more likely to feel overqualified than those who went to private schools. And this was done by the consulting firm McKinsey. The Bureau of Labor Statistics a number underlines the McKinsey findings. They're saying 48% of employed U.S. college grads are in jobs that require less than a four-year degree. So they tell you, all through your public school training, you got to get into college, kids. College is where it's at. You want to be able to earn a living, don't you? You want to be able to get that TV and go on those vacations and go skiing and buy a boat and buy a big house. Well, you got to go to college. If you don't go to college, you can't do any of that. What was that? Oh, that, that was some magazine art. Oh, that, so that was from our magazine crew, and you repurposed that. Awesome. Which brings me to the next part. Student loan defaults rising despite a way out. And uh, basically, it's those who are 90 days late on their student loan payments. They've gone up uh, to 11.7%. But the actual delinquency of those that are in their grace period or their deferment periods is uh, up to 30%. And this is a study that the New York Fed found. And from 2000 or 10 years ago, 2004 it was only 20%. So it's jumped 10% in 10 years. And here's a, here's a statistic I was blown away by. 2011-2012 school year, students and their families borrowed $76 billion to pay for college, according to the Pew Research Center. And that's just one year. Americans owe nearly a $1 trillion in school debt. And there you can see down by the numbers, the chart that we just showed up on screen that has the breakdown. So we have 80, uh, 70 million people disengaged, pretty much kind of floating around in their workspace. Why? Because they're in jobs they don't want. They're jobs they're overqualified for because they've been sold this dream that, you know, you have to go to college and you have to be in debt in order to make any money. And, um, well, another reason is... Uh, if we go to the Atlantic, America jobs dilemma. Employment up, but wages are down. So we're working, more people are working for less than there were. Isn't that amazing? Employment increased nationally by 1.6% or 2 million jobs in the year September 2011 to 2012. But weekly wages for the country as a whole declined by 1.1%. That may not seem a lot, but that is big if you accumulate that over the year and throughout the nation. Uh, this is one of only six annual average weekly wage declines since 1978, the report notes. Wage declines above all industries, save for the informa information sector, saw a modest increase of 1.3%. Employment increased nearly 84% in the largest counties over the same time frame, yet among those largest counties, nearly the same percent saw over the year declines in average weekly averages. So we've been sold by our controllers, by the banksters, that we have to to that if we, if, we, if we do a good job, if we work hard and we play fair, we're going to get that, that golden spoon. We're going we're gonna to be able to afford all those things that they show us on TV. But in actuality, the now deceased George Carlin put it best by saying this. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. Because you have to be asleep to believe it. That's it. The American dream is fake. It doesn't exist. The bankers have stolen it from you. They are the real owners of this country, and they're going to do what they want unless we wake more people up and we turn this thing around. That's the only thing that's going to change. Uh, we have a new film coming out called State of Mind. It's a DVD from the guys who did uh, Oklahoma City, A Noble Lie. This is 10 times better than that, and that was a great film. They really did a lot of research, really got the interviews. This, they went even one step further. They reinvested the profits from that into their next film, which is what you should do if you want to be a filmmaker. But, but for a limited time, and we're going to play the trailer here in a second, Alex is going to talk about it. When you get State of Mind, you order that. We're also going to throw in American Dream, 
fighting the line liars one stupid lie at a time. And this is about a 35-minute uh, documentary on the Federal Reserve and how it was into being, but it's done animated style. And it's done, it starts off with a guy who loses his house, loses everything, the bank is foreclosing, and he thought he was getting the American dream. But remember, you have to be asleep to believe it. So we're going to go now to the trailer, and when we come back, I'm going to have a little bit uh, of a message on Operation Paul Revere, a quick update for everybody out there. So stay tuned after this trailer. Infowars.com, because there's a war on for your mind. That has been my maxim since we started Infowars.com back in 1996, because there is a war on for all of our minds. Advertising is a basic form of propaganda, but there are dozens of other types of even more sophisticated. And most of the public is not even aware that this is happening. The new documentary film, State of Mind, is incredibly well done and goes over the history, goes over the crimes, goes over the things that have been committed by our government and other governments, and how that system is now being deployed against us today. It is such an important documentary film, and it's vital that everyone see it so that people be aware of the fact that manipulation of our psyche is indeed going on. In fact, this film is so important, it's so key that the general public who is sleeping see it, that I'm doing something we've never done before when we offer a new film, and that is offer another free film with it. Because it's important to know who controls the brainwashing and programming system in the mainstream media. The private, globalist-controlled Federal Reserve. The animated film An American Dream documents in a compelling but also humorous fashion how the private families that control the Federal Reserve took over our world. It's key to understand that they are using the technology of mind control to dumb down and keep the general public in the dark. And that's why for a limited time, when you order State of Mind, the full-length documentary film at Infowars.com, you will get American Dream fighting the lying liars one stupid lie at a time absolutely free. Two films, one price, exclusively offered at Infowars.com. Are we choosing our own paths, our own destiny? Or has it been pre-selected for us? C.S. Lewis said, when training beats education, civilization dies. We need to always be cognizant of, as a free society, that information can be used as a weapon. Barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We are seen as nothing but biological androids. To gain control of education in America not for a philanthropic purpose, but to change the thinking of the American people. From the time we're very young, we're taught to, you know, worship authority basically because that's our key to survival as young children. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. And the CIA scientists could actually film people who had been surreptitiously dosed with LSD. There's a brain entrainment process that takes place. That gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create. Whatever the public face of something is, whatever they're talking about publicly, there's something else over here they're probably not looking at. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would fully endorse, not only endorse, but demand a war. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control, psychological warfare, brainwashing. Are we controlled and manipulated? You bet. That's mind control par excellence. Find out how deep the rabbit hole really goes with this new groundbreaking documentary film, State of Mind. Available exclusively at Infowars.com. We are in an info war. And that's why I am promoting and distributing the film, State of Mind. 
So for a limited time, when you get the new documentary film, State of Mind, at InfoWars.com, you will get the animated historical documentary, The American Dream, absolutely free. A powerful combo guaranteed to expand your awareness and wake up your friends and family. Pre-order State of Mind today, exclusively available at InfoWars.com and InfoWarsStore.com. Secure this powerful tool in the fight for liberty at InfoWarsStore.com. And when you get State of Mind, you will also get the animated documentary historical film, American Dream, absolutely free. And you'll be supporting InfoWars.com and our media operations as we attempt to expose the globalist at a higher level. And you'll also be supporting independent filmmaking and the great work of these filmmakers. Now is the time to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. Now is the time to declare war against every form of tyranny over the mind of man, as Thomas Jefferson said. Because tyranny starts in the mind, and breaking that tyranny also starts in the mind. Get this documentary today, exclusively offered at InfoWars.com. So there you have Alex Jones explaining why he got in with these guys to help them promote their film, because by promoting works like this and other people's films, we're all going to wake more people up, and that's going to change our country. So we don't have to make films about this. We can make films about art or nature or you know other things in the future. But right now, we do have a job to do, and that is to wake people up to what is going on, to the real controllers, how they're being programmed, how to break their programming. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll lose hope. They'll be like, oh man, all this stuff is bad. What do I do? You become independent. Okay, that's how it is. You break yourself away from the system. You say no. And that's what we have people doing across the country. We're going to get to that in one second, but I have a quick update for Operation Paul Revere. So in January of this year, we launched Operation Paul Revere, the $115,000 video contest. And like I said, next week we're going to put out our list of the top finalists. We're going to break them down by category. At that point, we're going to let you guys provide feedback. But even before we do that, we do want to hear from you. We want to hear which ones were your favorites because maybe we missed something. Maybe somebody saw a video that they didn't quite agree with, but if you guys out there pointed out, well, maybe we'll put it in with the finalists. I mean, this is where we're going to grab all the ones that we think are really good and put them out there for everybody to see. We're going to build some playlists on YouTube. We're going to have a list of them on, uh, on a big page that we're going to build. That'll be next week. But there's the email you want to send it to. You put favorite in the subject line. Send it to paulrevere at infowars.com. Okay, just send us one. Uh, if you want to send us another email with another one, that's fine. But just send one video at a time. Don't send us 15 videos because then we're not even going to look at your email. One video. Send us one video that you like, that you think is the best out there. Because we, we, we like to hear your input. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of great patriots that have put these videos together, that put them out there. So send this out. Send this out to your list. Get people involved. Get them activated. Paul Revere at InfoWars.com. And uh, we're going to have that list of finalists up next week. Probably next Wednesday. Maybe next Thursday. Probably next Wednesday. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter, and in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.